This presentation will cover Chapter 5 of the Communication Systems book, Measurement Systems and Quality Assurance. Now at first, those might seem like two completely separate different things, uh, but actually they're very closely related and that's why we've put them together in the same chapter. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So when looking at an introduction for measurement systems, we're going to start by defining measurement. And as a very basic definition, we can say it's the process of determining a dimension, a quantity, or a capacity. Uh, so if you look at different examples, if we want to measure a wall system in a house, obviously we're going to measure that and, and come up with some kind of dimension for it. Maybe it's 8 feet, 6 inches long. Or if we're going to measure something on a CAD drawing, uh, we're going to measure that and find that it's two and a half inches long. Uh, so dimension obviously plays an important role. Uh, just as much as quantity d does as well, uh, we can measure the number of things, uh, especially out in industry. We're always going to be keeping track of the quantity, whether we're producing a part or we're producing a product or buying a product. Obviously, we're going to be concerned about the quantity. And as well as uh, measurement can also define the capacity, how much something can hold, or the maximum ability uh, or measurement of a particular product or service. When it comes to measurement, uh, there are standards of measurements. And this is incredibly important. Uh, if you think back to the old days, um, you know, two, three, four hundred years ago, um, or even way back in history, uh, we always needed some kind of standard. Uh, so if I developed a product and I said it was this long, we needed to make sure that I took that somewhere else that it would be that long um, there as well. And as the Industrial Revolution started coming about and mass production started happening, uh, it was so important to have standards of measurement. Uh, so for example, you know, if one community, uh, there was somebody who was developing bolts, uh, we wanted to make sure that the bolts identified in that community would be the same if we said it's three inches long uh, and then we had in another community somebody developing bolts and they said it was three inches long we wanted to make sure those were exactly the same so uh, early on we developed standards in order to make sure that there was consistency well fast forward that today and there are all kinds of different organizations associations uh, that communicate standards on measurement uh, one of those organizations is ANSI, the American National Standards Institute, and they develop standards for all kinds of different applications, whether it be uh, the actual sizes of bolts um, to uh, details that we would do on a CAD, CAD drawing. Uh, and again, the important thing is that the standards uh, allow for consistency across the board. As uh, our businesses and industries have gone worldwide, uh, there's been an increase in uh, worldwide standards organizations um, because it's no longer just, let's say, for example, in America making sure it's the same, but if we ship this over to Europe, we want consistency, or if we buy a product from Europe, we want to make sure there's consistency from there as well. And so ISO, uh, the International Standards Organization, has developed standards as well. And there's all kinds of different standards out there. Uh, the example that I have on the slide there is ISO 9000, which happens to deal with a standard of quality assurance. And so an organization, a business, an industry uh, can set up uh, different quality assurance, quality management programs uh, for their company. And uh, the ISO 9000 crew can come in, and if uh, my business meets that standard, uh, they will give me that stamp of approval that I've met ISO 9000 certification. And that's an important thing out there in industry uh, to uh, be able to identify that we have this quality assurance in place. Another one you could look at would be uh, the IEEE, uh, which is an electronics type of standards organization. Uh, IEEE 1394, for example, is the standard that's been ad identified uh, for FireWire, um, or what's more commonly known as FireWire. Um, so like you have a USB cable on your computer, um, the Apple computers about 10 years ago uh, provided for a FireWire connection on those computers. And at the time, FireWire would transfer data at a faster rate than the standard USB. Uh, this was very beneficial for things like transferring video, raw video footage from a digital camera to a computer. Uh, raw video footage takes up a lot of space, and so you could transfer it faster using a FireWire connection. And so uh, what they 
with the standard, they would say that um, in order to be considered an IEEE 1394 or FireWire, uh, that that cable would have to transfer data at a specific rate, at a certain rate. It would have to meet that standard. If it doesn't, then it wouldn't meet that 1394. And so, um, you know, there's all kinds of standards that are out there, and again, they just allow us for a way of consistency across the board. Okay, when we talk about measuring and measuring uh, for a dimension, um, we use scales uh, or tape measures, uh, but in the drafting and technical drawing world, we use scales um, as a device for measuring distance on drawings. And there are basically three different major types of scales that can be broken down even further, but in general, we have three types of scales that we use, typically use. We have an engineer scale, an architect scale, and a metric scale. Uh, so, for example, um, to start with an architect scale uh, that looks like what you see down here on the bottom, uh, you can see the standard customary system of inches measurement along the bottom of this scale here. Uh, so we go from a half inch to one inch to one and a half inch, and it can be broken down further and further. The standard is uh, the smallest unit being a sixteenth, but then that can also go even smaller to a sixty-four or thirty-second, then a sixty-fourth, and so forth. But then when we need to scale large uh, objects, large structures into a small drawing, we need to scale that down, and therefore we'd use the architect scale. And this top side of this scale you can see identifies that in this case this is a 3 16 equals 1 foot scale. And so actually on here, uh, from this 0 point to this 2 actually represents 2 feet in real life. And so this is a way that we're able to scale large structures, uh, draw them in complete accuracy on a small, small scale. And that's an example of an architect scale. Another example that you can see on the top here is an engineer scales. Uh, which uh, does it a little bit different, whereas the architect scale um, uses a, the full scale is in inches, uh, but then when you begin to scale things down smaller, uh, it goes to feet and inches. Uh, with the engineer scale, it looks, works a little bit different. And with the engineer scale, we're not just limited to feet and inches. And you'll also see how it's actually broken up into uh, a base 10 system. So on an engineer scale, uh, basically it breaks that scale within one inch, it breaks it into an even number of parts based in 10. So on this one you can see this is a 50. So if you look over here to where the 5 would be, uh, from here to here, which equals one inch, this is broken into 50 parts. Uh, so in this case what we could say is on a scale we could say 1 equals 50 feet. And so on our piece of paper, on our technical drawing, uh, what would really be a true inch represents 50 feet. Uh, but the engineer scale also has a, a wide range of diversity to it in that it can represent many other things. For example, we could very easily change that to 500 feet. So now one inch represents 500 feet. Or we could change that to other units from miles to uh, basically any different type of, of measurements you want to do, you can adjust it. And across the board on this scale then, you have different levels of scales, meaning this might be a 50, this is probably a 10 right here, where one inch represents 10 units. And so in this case, notice here that it's broken down into 10 evenly, uh, even parts. It's not inches, it's not fractions of inch anymore, uh, it's just 10 even, even parts. And so in the engineer scale we use, um, we can use a decimal system, whereas in an architect scale we're going to use a fraction system. And then we also have the metric scales out there as well that break uh, distances down using the various metric units. Another measuring measurement system out there is the American point system, and one that we're maybe not as familiar with, uh, but one that is actually very commonly used. Uh, and it was originally used in the printing and publishing fields and still is today. Uh, we're just not as familiar with it because we actually do a lot of that on a computer. Uh, but actually, as we measure things on a computer, we use the American point system. For example, uh, when you identify in Word that you want to use a 12-point standard font, uh, that 12 points comes from the American point system. Uh, so the ruler system, or kind of like the tape measure or ruler that we're familiar with, uh, um, is called a line gauge in the American point system. And it's used to measure type and layout size. 
And so in this case, uh, one actual inch, one true inch, can be broken down into six picas, or 72 points. So here you can see an example on uh, this ruler here, or excuse me, this line gauge, where actually what would be one inch uh, represents six picas. And then within each pica is 12 points. Uh, so uh, when you would ident identify in Word, let's say if you make something 72 points large, that's going to be pretty big on your Word document. However, in real life, if you were to print it out, it would come out as one inch. And so that's where typically we might type in a 12-point font. Um, you can see how that's actually going to be a very small uh, fraction of an inch. And that's where the point system is nice because it allows us to make very small and accurate measurements that would otherwise be very difficult as a fraction. Uh, so if you were to make something really small, like seven or eight points, you know, to break that down as an inch fraction would be really cumbersome. And so, uh, but we can very simply do that by calling it eight points, and that's one of the major advantages of the point system. But now bringing in quality assurance, and I kind of talked a little bit about quality assurance with ISO 9000, uh, but quality assurance is a major part of what we do in industry, and it's an important part of what we do. And that as we, if we're in a business to develop a product or to provide a service, we need to make sure that we are um, that we're providing and giving a quality service or product to our customer. So measurement is directly affects the quality of product, and this is where why these two are so closely related, uh, because the measurement directly affects the quality of a product. And so when we produce something, how closely it is to the the exact size that it's supposed to be, how well it measures uh, the uh, proposed size of it is going to communicate the quality of that product. So quality control is needed to assure that uh, we have met the standards and that uh, when we produce this product that it meets the standards that are out there. And so quality control uses measurement. So for example, if I tell a customer that I'm going to build a garage for them and I tell them it's going to be 24 feet long, uh, but I end up making it 18 feet long, they're going to be upset and that would be poor quality on my part, meaning that I failed to use measurements properly and using the standards of measurements to ensure that it was the proper size. And you continue to do that and your business is going to struggle. Word is going to get out um, that you're not, you don't meet the standard, that you, you, you don't, um, you're not building or constructing or creating a product uh, that is as good of quality as others. And so uh, it's incredibly important, no matter what industry you're going out into, uh, that you have a quality assurance in place, and you're going to use measurements, dimension, quantity, and capacity to identify how well you've met that standard. Uh, quality assurance can use the system model that we've talked about uh, all along, and that in our system model we have input, we have process, and we have outputs. And it's important that we do quality assurance on each one of those levels. For example, if you t think about, let's say, a lumber mill, a place that takes raw logs and, and cuts them down, um, the inputs are going to be the, the trees or the lumber, um, the trunks of the trees and the branches and so forth that come in. Well, we need to do a degree of quality assurance on those because there may be some lumber that comes in, there may be some trees, some branches uh, that are just way outside, they're too crooked, um, they don't even meet it. And if we were to try to run that through our process, uh, it would cause more problems. So we need a degree of quality assurance to determine even what, the, what is the base level of tree that we're going to allow into our plant. And then within the plant, we're going to have all kinds of processes that we need to uh, ensure quality as well. So we're going to have multiple processes, saws, cutting processes, milling, planing, those types of things. Uh, but at each of those, we need to ensure that we are doing it accurately. So if we're cutting a log down to a 2x4 uh, with the actual size of 1.5 inches by 3.5 inches, uh, if in our plane or in our mill, we actually are cutting that down to 3 and a quarter, um, that's pretty poor quality. And we try to turn around and sell that uh, to a uh, lumber company or to a hardware store and we start shipping them uh, two by fours that are an inch and a half by only three and a quarter, that's not going to work. That's poor quality and they're not going to buy, they're not going to come back and, and buy things from you again. So we have to ensure that uh, the, uh, throughout the processes that we're meeting the standard. And then lastly on the output, um, we need to do a final check to make sure that the quality is there. 
quality insurance is so important and uh, even though you know in many cases it costs more money to do quality insurance you have to balance that between how much quality insurance you're doing versus uh, the product and how efficiently you can create a product